Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are going to be reviewing the Wi-Fi Pineapple from Hack5. So as you can see, I have the Hack5 uh, website pulled up here. And um, so this is the documentation side of Hack5. And what this is going to be is all the documentation on the pineapple, including your setup, your um, getting started, basic information about it, your connecting to the internet, console access, Wi-Fi operations, if you want to connect via Wi-Fi. Um, you have your FAQs, which almost everything has, and then development, so as it gets developed, everything that's going on. And so, um, the development will also include how to build your own modules, stuff like that, which we'll learn about more in this video. But um, for now, we're going to go to the Setup Basics section. Um, and so, about the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Um, we're going to be reviewing a um, Pineapple Tetra today. So I already have that set up in the office and it's connected via Ethernet to our router. So it's already it has its own internet access and if we look here, um, I'm actually connected to the Pineapple right now. And um, so we're going to be doing all of our stuff with this entire process already complete. So if you were uh, setting up the Nano, you have your Android setup. And then here's your Windows slash Linux setup. And the setup's going to be pretty similar. Um, the IP addressing for the web UI is going to be the same. And so um, we're going to be browsing to the um, 172.16.421 then port number 1471. So I already have this all set up, so I'm going to enter my password. And then log in. So as you can see, my pineapple, this is going to be our dashboard. My pineapple's been running for 5 hours and 30 minutes. Um, I have zero clients connected, which will mess with clients in a little bit. And then we have 20 SSIDs in the pool. Now that's just for me scanning the network for SSIDs that people are looking for. Um, just testing the network. Um, let me clear my notifications for now. So, this is going to be your um, dashboard. Now you can load bulletins from Pack 5 if you want. Um, this is going to be small updates with the firmware, the pineapple itself, the, um, the different projects that are working. Um, so our first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our recon. Um, recon is going to actually scan continuously for devices that are looking for SSIDs. It's going to capture MAC addresses of devices connected to networks. A lot of really important information for a pen tester. Um, and then it's actually going to dump the files to a slash tmp slash so if you were to ssh into it you would find it under that um however you can also access everything that you're going to need through this web ui so um we're just going to do a quick 30 second scan um we'll start it and it's going to ask you to start your pine ap we're going to enable that now while the scan starts um we'll see that there's an actual loading bar that goes across as it's scanning And so now we're going to have um, scan results that are going to show up in this bottom section down here. And um, that's where this pineapple is currently loading. And it's going to bring up a results of MAC addresses. As you can see here, the SSIDs that they're connected to, um, the security on that uh, network, um, WPS, channel number, the amount of signal loss, and then when's the last time these devices were seen with this network. Um, for example, this is going to be um, the home network that we have here. Um, you can see the MAC addresses, MAC addresses, devices. It does have a WPA2 encryption. Um, WPS we do have, it's on channel 11. And then there's negative 85 signal, so there's signal loss there. Um, if we go to this network here, it's hidden network. Now, one thing we can do with this, which is really cool, is if we go to the security, um, we can start a capture of wireless handshake. And um, if I just switch over to my phone real quick, what I'll do is I will actually connect to this network. And while my phone connects to the network, 
it will capture that handshake and it will let us know that it captured that handshake right here um, and what you can do is you actually download the PCAP file and then it will allow you to open up a uh, Wireshark and go in and see the handshake and grab the um, key to, to connect to the network and then you can be into the network so it's a great tool for uh, white hat um, pen testing um, and if you are a black hat good tool but um, it's a great tool for pen testing as a white hat hacker um, if you go to clients, clients is going to be any device that's connected to the Wi-Fi that's uh, emitted by the pineapple so if I just connect here on my phone um, let me refresh, let's see if it picks up uh, it's a little far away, it's on the other side of the house so it might not pick up on the client alright, there it is, so the iPhone XR connected the IP address of my iPhone, the MAC address um, do not connect is my open um, internet that doesn't have a password and um, it's obviously named do not connect because I don't want other people connecting thinking they um, should connect um, and then tracking, so tracking's gonna, um, tracking scripts are something that you can write you can find them online um, but each one's going to do a little something different. This one's going to be MAC address tracking and the SSID tracking. Um, you can per you can go on your own and study um, all the different types of uh, commands you can use for the script. Um, it looks like it's using bash scripting, but um, this is an area that um, is a lot more script side than actual graphical user interface. So it would require you to learn a little bit more about that. Um, the next thing we're going to move on to is modules. Now I have an evil portal module downloaded. Basically what this is going to do is it's a captive portal. So anyone that connects to the network, they have to, um, they get brought up with a pop-up uh, web page that I make um, using HTML. And they can input username, password, and then that gets sent to me. And if I had set it up like an evil twin, such as like a Gmail sort of login, then if they logged in thinking that they were logging in with their Gmail, then I would have their use, username and password for their Gmail. Um, but simple things like that uh, can really make this a great test, a pen testing tool. But if we do click on the get modules, um, we'll see that there are a lot more modules than just the one. Um, for example, we have in module maker, easy way to make your own modules that if you have a specific module you're thinking about making um, that they don't already have. Um, you have themes, so this really make your make your pineapple your pineapple, customize it yourself. Um, SSH key manager. Um, you have your um, manage all module logs. So if you want to have a centralized location to go to for our, all of your modules, because you have more modules than I do, um, and you want it all centralized, it's a great um, module to have installed. Um, random roll is more of a pranking sort of module, so there's a fun side to it. Um, signal strength is going to be simply testing the strength of wireless cell phones that are with range. Um, there's a lot of different ones you can go through, and you can look at this basic description, or if you look online, there are other ways to get um, really in-depth descriptions on each of the devices, on each of the device modules and um, it's a great way to learn in depth more ways to use the pineapple than just simply uh, sending out SSIDs and capturing them, getting handshakes, the really s simple and straightforward uses of the pineapple. Um, so if we go look at the module that I do have installed, Evil Portal, um, we'll see that it's a very easy to use um, screen. Um, you can simply type in a portal name, create a new portal, um, and then with logs, you can uh, view when the last time it was run. I don't have anything showing right now because I haven't run it. Um, actually, I'm going to deactivate this one. But um, I didn't have it started, so even leaving this activated, the only one, the only thing that was happening was nothing because Cap the Portal wasn't actually started. Um, you can enable it so that whenever you plug in the pineapple, it instantly enables the Cap the Portal. Um, that can be useful if you're in a public area and you want it to immediately start with that portal the second you um, started up your pineapple. Um, 
but now we're going to move on to the filter side of the pineapple. So um, you have the option to deny specific uh, MAC addresses or SSIDs. However, the more useful one is allow. So if you want to deny all and allow just specific uh, MAC addresses or SSIDs to be listed, um, then this is going to be what you want to do. So if you know you want a target device to be able to connect, then you're going to want to use that specific MAC address um, or that same thing for the SSIDs. Now this is really one of the hearts of the Pineapple is the Pine AP, so this is the access point. Um, so this is how I'm able to display um, the Pineapple and the Do Not Connect internet systems. So if you look here, we have false network, um, a, it looks like a high school's network. Uh, we have the Do Not Connect, which is my other one. Um, some really basic network names. Um, CSIT looks like someone has a class at um, a college with CSIT. Um, and then a home network, home networks. Um, and then Sonos looks, um, sounds like it's going to be a speaker network that they connect to. Um, but really basic networks that we're going to find here. Um, and you're actually able to add your own custom ones. So let's just say I wanted to do um, YouTube video and add that to the list of SSID pools that we're going to have it. Um, if I clear the SSID pool, um, I'll show you guys how to do that. You just click that arrow, clear SSID pool. If you have a list that you want to download in broadcast, you can just hit download. SS uh, you can you can copy and paste those um, into the the pineapples um, directory. Um, and then you can also just download the list of um, SSIDs to your computer if you wanted to. Um, so what we're going to do for the sake of this testing video is we're just going to put YouTube video in here. We're going to hit add. We're going to watch it go into the SSID pool. And now over here is where the magic happens. So we have um, Pine AP is enabled. Auto start Pine AP is disabled. So right now we have the Pine AP enabled from when we did our recon. Um, auto start, it is off, so it means it's off when, it, when we plugged in the pineapple earlier, 5 hours and 30 minutes ago, or however long it's been now. But, um, it's going to log the events that happened, client connect notifications, so it's going to notify anytime somebody else connects. Um, client disconnect notifications, so somebody left, currently don't have that enabled, but yeah, I could find uses for that. Um, capture SSIDs to pool. So that's if a phone's looking for an SSID, if a computer's looking for an SSID, it gets sent to the SSID pool. Um, beacon response is going to be so that live, when you are broadcasting, the beacon will immediately send back out the IP address, that or the SSID, not IP address, but the SSID that it found. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the broadcast SSID right now. Um, I'm going to save the Pine AP settings now that I have checked broadcast SSID pool. Um, and then let me just check to see if it's up on my phone, and then I'll pull up the Wi-Fi systems. Okay, so it is up. Um, if we look here, YouTube video shows up right there. Um, and these are all neighborhood networks, but YouTube video is going to be this one right here. Um, if I did testing network, hit add. See, that goes in the SSID pool, and we should start to see it come in here. Yep, there it is right there. So that's the beacon response of it being immediately projected. Um, I'll turn this off now so people don't start questioning things. But um, that's going to be how you broadcast any SSIDs that you've captured. So what you can do um, really quickly, you can uh, put continuous on here. You can do both if you have a... Tetra. If you have the Nano, you're going to be limited to the 2.4 gigahertz. But if you have the Tetra, you are able to get both. Um, you can hit start, and then um, with Pine AP enabled and broadcast SSID pool enabled, what it'll do is it'll start filling in the SSID pool as it's scanning and broadcasting those back out. And um, it's a really great way to um, get people to connect automatically without realizing it, because they think they're connecting automatically to a known network, but it's really your pineapple when you're just taking information. Um, logging is going to be a great way to know, okay, what did I do? What happened? What was the pineapple doing during this time? 
Um, so if you look, we have per request. This was me doing the scan earlier. Um, it's just requesting SSIDs, MAC addresses, all that, and it's uh, compiling all those into the into the um, format that we saw. Reporting. This is going to be if you're a network admin and you need to um, send a report of everything you find on the pineapple. What you can do is you can hit generate report for every one hour, however long. Um, sorry, that was the TV turning off. But you can generate a report, you can store the report, and you can send it automatically. And um, what's nice with the report is you can actually clear when done. So the um, log will be put into the report, and then that log will be deleted right after the report is sent. So it's a really great tool for network admins to use if they need to keep an updated log, but they don't want their pineapple to constantly fill up with data and then not work anymore because it's out of storage. Um, for networking, this is going to be um, how you configure your um, access point. So um, you have your AP channels. These are all the ones I'm connected to. Number the AP channel 11, which is set by default. Um, my management SSID, the one that I'm connected to. Pineapple, and this is the password. Um, this is the open SSID. Um, the open SSID is the one that um, you saw me connect to earlier with my phone that we saw under clients. Um, maximum clients, you can set a maximum. Um, and if you want to, you can hide it so that other people aren't connecting to an open network. Um, and then this is going to be your firewall settings. Automatically, these are um, disallowed. So you can enable it where you allow SSH um, or do you allow UI access. Um, currently, I have both of these off because I don't really need them on. But um, you also have the OUI database, which um, if you do go to wifipineapple.com, you can find that and look at it. Um, it's a great thing to look at on your own, um, on your time, but it's a great database for you to use. Um, you have Wi-Fi client mode. We're currently only one that we see right here is the WLAN 1 MON. Um, but choosing WLAN 1 will interfere with Pine IP, so just make sure you're aware of that. Um, MAC addresses. Um, this is the current MAC address of the um, Pineapple. And then this is going to be all of your Ethernet, so any Ethernet settings you have running, it's going to be all here. Um, and I do suggest you use Ethernet for this if you're going to connect to a network. That way if you do connect to your Pineapple, you don't have to switch back and forth between your Pineapple and then whatever network you have connected to the Internet, because that way you can just use this to um, search the Internet, because you can just be like, is my Internet working? Uh, yes, my internet's working because I have the pineapple connected to the internet via an ethernet cable through the router. Um, configuration, this is just your time zones and stuff. Currently mine's got the wrong time zone, but I haven't really had any problems with that right so far. Um, I just never bothered to change it or anything. If I wanted to, I could just go here and change and save time zone, but we're just going to leave it how it is. Um, landing page, this is just going to be... Um, any clients that are browsing HTTP pages, they'll be brought to this landing page before they can use it. Um, similar to the Evil Portal, the Evil Portal was a little bit easier to use. This is just going to be um, a really basic version of the Evil Portal. Um, button scripting is going to be um, is going to be um, in what the reset button actually does for the um, reset button if it's pressed long or if it's pressed for less than five seconds so um, for mine it's just going to be reboot if I press the power button on on the um, button on the back of the pineapple tetra but um, you could change that to do whatever you'd like um, just using simple bash scripting you can find things online for how to use that how to um, configure that but I've just left mine at the basic settings um, and then if we go to the advanced tab this is going to be a lot of advanced, so your USB ports, your resources, so if you need to know how the file system works, you have all that. Um, firmware upgrades, we can check for upgrades. I don't believe there are any. Yeah, there's no upgrades available right now. Um, Cross-site scripting, you can use the pineapple for that. Um, I haven't tried that, but I might do the, um, something with that in the future. Um, API tokens, no API tokens yet. Um, you can generate a new token if you'd like. Um, and then notes, um, so if you saw earlier, yeah, here's one, um, so here's one from earlier today when I was messing with the pineapple, 
um, I just went to the MAC address and if I scrolled down under everything I could add a note and so I could add a note saying my iPhone this is my iPhone used for testing if the networks working and so then I can save notes note, note saved and then close this out refresh the notes no this is my iPhone used for testing if the network is working so if you just want to save quick notes you just go down to notes he, uh, under clients you would click on the client scroll down notes this is my iPhone used for testing save it close out go back to notes and then you have a list of all your notes when you're done so say you want to note say you note that a server is um, a DHCP server or an IIS server and you just want to quickly no jot that in your notes, save it so you know that it's a Mac, you know it's MAC address for later. Um, you can write down the IP if you want under the note, and that that all go to this page. And so it makes it really helpful. And um, now, if there's anything I didn't cover in the video, I guarantee you it will be covered in this help section, um, which is a really in-depth um, analysis on each of the tabs that I went through. So we have our dashboard, which is the really basic front page. You have the recon, which is what I showed you, um, the SSID, the MAC address, and all that scanning. Um, you have your clients, which I showed you. With my phone, I can connect to the network, and it'll it'll log my client. Um, filters was really the allow and deny um, clients um, it's based on MAC or SSID address, MAC address or SSID um, broadcasted. Um, Pine AP, I showed you how to turn that on. Um, auto start for when it starts up. I showed you all of the options there. Um, but it really just goes more in depth than what I showed you. Um, tracking, this is a great um, one to review if you're unsure how the tracking works. Um, but like you can see, it says the tracking feature was continuously scanned for specified clients by MAC address and execute a customizable tracking script. This feature requires a log probes and or log association feature of high NAP to be enabled. So a lot of these do all these tabs do work in tandem where some things are required to be on in one tab in order for a second tab to work. Um, Pine AP login. This is just um, logging the events that happen with the Pine AP. You can filter that log. Uh, you can disable the the seeing the probes. You can um, Display associations, um, just see different things specific to the log that you're looking for. Um, reporting, like I told you, it's um, the feature enables the auditor to generate reports at a specific, specified interval. I might have said um, network admin, but it would also be great for auditors. Um, networking, like I said, really your uh, access point, um, your access point setup. Um, so. The name of your access point, MAC address, um, the host name, things like that. Um, configuration um, allows you to change the settings, modify landing page, time zone, everything we went over. Advanced is going to be your resources, your USB, cross-site scripting, API tokens, and firmware upgrade, which I showed you. And then your notes is the um, notes that I took, like my iPhone. This iPhone was used for testing to see if you could connect to the network. Um, but really basic things like that. But this goes a lot more in depth. And I really suggest you look at this. And if you have made it to the end of the video, um, I suggest you start with this. If you really have no clue what's going on, start with this. Read it. Read it twice. Look over it. Make sure you get it. Um, if you don't understand anything, you do have the um, documenter documents. Um, on the Hack5 website, so if you go to doc.hack5.org, I will have this website linked in the description below. But um, it's really simple. You go to this website, go to Wi-Fi Pineapple, and then you have all this information. So you have um, what I showed you at the start. You're getting started um, setting up your Wi-Fi Pineapple, um, how to connect to the internet, um, console access. Just if you have any questions, troubleshooting, it's all right here. Um, what are the LEDs on the front? Because um, there are three LEDs on the front. And um, this gives you a really basic um, rundown of what's everything Pineapple. You also do have um, the actual Wi-Fi Pineapple.org, I believe it is. 
um, that's meant that we um, saw mentioned at um, <clears throat> pardon me, but we saw it mentioned um, next to the OUI um, page. It was the um, actual database that um, had all of the um, information of. It was the database on the website that had all the information about the Wi-Fi Pineapple. So yeah, it was just Wi-Fi Pineapple.com. So you see here. So um, we can go put that into our um, URL. Wi-Fi Pineapple.com, and it's just gonna bring you to the landing page of the actual Wi-Fi Pineapple for more information. So. Here is a look at the um, difference between the Tetra and the Nano, so I'll leave that on the screen for a second for you to look at it. But if you do have any more questions, you have Reddit, everybody's on Reddit. Um, you have GitHub, which is a great repository for any modules, anything like that that you're looking for to add on. Um, and then you do have the Hack5 actual documents on um, everything. So they do have their documents page and they do have a, a YouTube channel. That's great, I recommend uh, checking it out. They do a lot of videos using the pineapple and how it works, and it's a great resource for you to have in your back pocket as a pen tester or just someone who likes dabbling in this sort of field. But um, anyways, that's going to be it for today. Um, it was great reviewing this pineapple. Um, the pineapple tetra is available for $200 when it's in stock. Um, currently, the only one in stock is the Nano Basic which is going to be um, cheaper than the Tetra, but it's not going to have as many um, features and abilities. But it will be a lot more easier to carry portably. As you can see, there's quite a different size between the two. And so um, this small form factor makes it easier to sneak into a business if you're trying to do a pen test, or it makes it just easier to carry around in general. As you can see, someone carrying it on their vest, um, made for mobile, you can connect it to an Android phone and use that, or you can just have it in your pocket a lot easier than having it um, carried in a big box like uh, the Tetra has to be. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and peace.